And welcome everybody, it's, uh, it's already June, it's uh, James and Lex here from the Trading Academy. We welcome all our new members um, and obviously all the old members as well. If any of you have any questions, as always, email us and we try to uh, answer it in the next uh, trading club meeting or sometimes directly, depending on uh, if it's of interest of, uh, to all of you or only to a few of you. Um, any comments uh, on, on, on how we should be running these meetings, always welcome. Uh, we do the best we can, uh, but obviously always room for improvement. Uh, what we're going to be talking about this month, we're going to be talking about what we, uh, what we learned in, in May. We're going to look at the uh, trade ideas that we uh, had before and how they've been doing. Um, as always, it's for educational reasons only. Don't assume that because there's a trade here that we uh, you know, make the case for that we think that you should be doing it or that even we are doing it ourselves. It's just um, you need to see those case studies and learn from it and, and, and improve on it and do your own research before you put it on yourself. Then we're going to look at a few new themes and like I said before, we're going to be answering your trading questions and some of your ideas. Also, like I said, questions welcome, yes. Ideas welcome to share with the rest of the uh, community. Um, I wouldn't say even better, but definitely uh, really appreciate it. And, uh, the idea here is that we, uh, you know, that we uh, that we form a community, and that this is for you, for us, by you, by us. Absolutely. So uh, I've heard this before: sell in May and go away. What does that mean, uh, James? Well, it's uh, it's an investor proverb, apparently. Um, okay. I don't know who said it first, but uh, it seems to repeat every single year. Um, but the idea is, it's an old adage. I think if you look at the, is it called the Stock Traders uh, Almanac? Yeah. That's to be confused with Almanac. Um, yeah, the, the idea is that particularly equity markets uh, historically have tended to, um, to have a good start to the year up until around May time um, and then tend to exhibit a little bit of weakness over the summer, summer months and then tend to pick up towards the end of the year again. Um, so yeah, that's the idea. Yeah, and, and, and obviously it's, it's, it's on average selling May because on average the summer is not so good. Um, and then uh, it's, it's obviously not always true. Sometimes the summer is very good. Um, then you have the year-end rally, November, December often, but you have to first get uh, past October, which tends to be a really dangerous month. Um, several crashes that, that, that happened in that month. But, you know, if, if, you, um, if you had done an investment strategy which had uh, bought in, 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 in December and sold in May, and the rest of the year you were out of the market, I think, I mean, I need to check it, but uh, probably you would have done a lot better than uh, being invested through the whole year, uh, year in, year out. So sell in May and go away. Um, so let's see if that would have been a, a smart decision uh, further through. So what's really interesting here is like the S&P uh, made an, made an uh, all-time high when was that exactly? I think it was the 21st, 20th, 21st of May last year, 2015. Okay. So we're about a year further. We've, we've tried to crash several times. We've seen, uh, so, so the high is uh, eventually around 30. We've seen uh, 1830, so 300 points lower. So almost a 15% correction. And you know what? Despite all the worries that are going in the world, uh, S&P is pretty much at the, uh, at the, at the all-time high. So it's, it's pretty, uh, pretty phenomenal. And, uh, you know, I was quoted in, in, in Reuters, uh, like, uh, yesterday, like the end, the, end of, the end of May. And, um, yeah, I mean, you've you got to give credit to the, to the strength of this market. Markets climb a wall of worry, and that seems to be the case here. You know, the, the world's economy isn't great. I mean, U.S. economy might be a little bit better, and an interest rate hike coming soon. And then you would say about that interest rate hike, okay, but that's actually really negative for markets because, you know, they've been almost financed by, by zero rates and rates going up could destabilize this whole thing. But you know what? The market kind of likes uh, a little bit of economic strength in the U.S. as well. So, you know, bull market, uh, bull market still. Just quickly on that note, corporate America, I read this morning that um, despite having like record cash piles of, I think it's 1.8 uh, trillion. trillion, yeah, not billion, yeah. 1.8 trillion, big numbers. Yeah, um, there's still a mass, something like 6.6 .6 trillion worth of debt. So, as a ratio, it's actually as low the cash to debt for corporate America as it was in 2008, right? Right, so that, that's the thing. And obviously, debt you take on debt because the cost of money, the cost of debt is basically zero because of interest rates being. Are you saying that's zero. pretty dangerous? 
it's risky. It's just indebted everything, including the, the, yeah. the corporate sector, not just the consumer. And obviously, corporates have been changing their balance sheets and taking on more debt. Yeah, like you say, on, on, based on those low rates. So, um, and how can that be serviced if rates were to go beyond a certain level higher? Yeah, it'd be really difficult. That's that's the thing. Agreed. So in May, what we basically saw sell off in the S and P, try to test the downside. On many levels, you could see a reverse head and shoulder, breaking the uh, early April uh, lows. But you know what? It, ma it made that low. It called everybody out and uh, close to the highs again. We have this uh, strategy in, in one of our um, you know, in courses, which is called Turtle Soup. And that's, you know, the turtles, uh, Richard Dennis, uh, momentum traders. And here, you know, people try to follow that momentum, try to find the downside, shorted it 2040, 2035. Uh, and you know what? We're back to the high. So that. Uh, you know, the, the, the turtles ended up in the soup. So that's the turtle soup strategy. Um, and if you want more info, just uh, send us a message. Um, so what's been happening since uh, last May? And like we said, uh, the S&P is close to the, to the uh, all-time high. But if you look at stocks in, in, in average, uh, global stocks, uh, they haven't done too well. Uh, commodities have been destroyed. And funnily enough, the, it hasn't been because of uh, US dollar strength, because the US dollar hasn't really... Uh, Changed since since that period. What has done well is is bonds, which means that uh, you know global rates have have continued to go down. And you know the uh, the traditional medicine from the, from the central banks in in Japan and in uh, in Europe has been to to print more money. Uh, but you know what? That hasn't really uh, helped. Uh, the yen has only uh, and there's the, the familiar sirens again. <laughs> They're still having quarters. Uh, every, every, yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're still out here, so I, would, I, would, I wouldn't worry about it. It's, it's, not, it's not for us, at least not this time. Um, and the yen has uh, strengthened uh, over 10% since, uh, since over the last year. Yeah. First the dollar. So that, uh, that quantitative easing hasn't really worked in, in Japan. And we've talked about it in previous meetings. And you know what? The euro dollar is... Uh, as we discussed, it's just firmly in, in, in a range, yeah. nothing really going on there. That so, diminishing potency of, uh, of central bank QE, yeah, supposedly. Yeah. It could be, it could be the thing, one thing we've all got wrong this year, and it could come back to bite us pretty hard, but we will yeah. see. Yeah, and you see here, like if you look at the dollar, how it had traded over the, last, over the last year, you know, it was almost uh, uh, weakening a bit too, too much, and now it's, it's just back to uh, May, May, put it back into the, uh, firmly into the unchanged uh, range. So what uh, this 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 absolutely fascinating chart to me maybe one of the the, the more important charts uh, this month is going on about European banks and obviously when 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 Lehman went bust this this whole sector absolutely collapsed because it was going to be a systemic issue you know one bank goes down can't pay its obligation to the other banks so it's uh, the whole si the whole system is so connected that uh, yeah you can't have a a big bank go down and so when when Lehman was saved. Uh, the banks obviously uh, massively rallied, uh, doubled in, in this case on the on the European banks. The, the average bank, a lot of banks went up a lot more. If you looked in the US, it'd probably be uh, even, even, even or be a much stronger rally even. Mm. But you know what? In Europe, they're like you know pretty much back to where they were, um, you know, eight years ago. Right? Still, those those US banks. We highlighted this, I think, around November time. They didn't retrace on a relative basis compared to the market. They didn't reach that thirty-eight point two percent retracement. They rallied or bounced about thirty-three percent right. off the low on a relative basis compared to stocks broadly the market. I think the interesting thing on this chart as well, Lex, is um, it's weekly rather than daily, um, given the time range. Sure. Um, looks as though there might be a little bit on the momentum indicators. Might be a little bit of positive divergence there. Yeah, so, so the it RSI could be risky, making the risky new... one to be short around these levels. If if you've been short, um, it could be risky to uh, to initiate a short here as well. Certainly. Yeah, and for some of you might wonder why. Okay, actually, you know what? Why did the banks go lower than they were in in, in Lehman before? And there's obviously around the, the Greek uh, Greek crisis where we thought the whole of Europe is going to implode. And you know, <laughs> we've got that to look forward to again, probably and, in another and, month or two. <laughs> yeah, some of the usual Greece yeah. stories coming out again. But. So basically, the European banks have been in a range that tried to recover towards the end, uh, towards the middle of 2015. Uh, yeah, so I mean, the, que the question is really, what is this telling us? As opposed to, um, you know, is this a nice buy? Because you f you f your first, and obviously on the, the, you know, the divergence between the RSI and, and the stock chart, 
it might well be a buy. But you need to wonder why is it that um, you know these banks have come down a lot. And one of the reasons is uh, obviously extra regulatory uh, rules, which uh, you know the de-risking of these banks. Uh, taxpayer in Europe doesn't really want to pay up again if if it goes wrong. And so the, the regulators are just making life a lot higher for the banks. And the return on these banks is, um, you know, that they're allowed to make is, is a lot lower. There's also a lot more competition from new startups, you know, direct lending, peer-to-peer, uh, that makes uh, makes life for these banks is, uh, banks harder. Um, so so I'd say before you start uh, chart trading, you start you need to have to think a lot more about those uh, about those kind of things. But it's definitely an interesting chart that uh, you know these these banks, um, you know, don't are clearly not in in the bull market, and you know there's such a big part of the economy that uh, you know it's, it's, it's worth looking at. So maybe what I would ask uh, you guys, um, for those of you who are interested, is to yeah to send me some reasons why you uh, think they go lower. Or why do you think they go uh, go higher? Be interesting yeah, to we discuss can uh, it back this time. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, well, in Japan, there's not much uh, different. Obviously, these uh, you know, here's a chart since 2012. I think it's, it's Mitsubishi we've got here. Right. Okay. Mitsubishi UFJ. Fine. Okay. So that's uh, that, that did pretty well. And you know what? Uh, as as Abenomics is not really working. You know, again, a beautiful uh, turtle soup in, in in Q2 2015 when it was making a new high. So people went for it, got stopped out. Then they went for it again a quarter later, got stopped out. And you know what? The um, the chart the chart is not particularly looking good, and it's lost about a third of its uh, its value over the last year or so. And it's 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 not a great chart. Same as European banks, Japanese banks look uh, look pretty horrendous, given that uh, given compared to to when we looked at the S and P, for example, like. Uh, yeah, this is not where the strength is in the markets. And then, uh, yeah, so this is, uh, we look at the first week of May. Since then, the, the market has recovered quite a lot. But you can see that, uh, you know, once once the market starts coming off, you know, a lot of money is destroyed really quickly. And, and here, the first week of May, uh, $300 billion uh, got destroyed, which is, uh, I mean, I guess it's a bit less than half the market cap in Apple. Um, but it's, it's still a hell of a lot of money. Um, to give up, so that's uh, one of the other things that happened in May. Um, and and so what's what's going on here? Big Mac, Apple Mac, short Apple Mac. What's was this chart, James? Showing the uh, the best and the worst performer, top and bottom performer in the uh, the Dow over the last year. So okay. Kind of the same period of time. Ah, um, so we see McDonald's at the bottom, up twenty five percent. Yeah. So and it's, Apple down twenty seven percent. Yeah, they, this ranking was negative, so worst performers at the top and best performers at the bottom. It's the so called dogs of the Dow, where you buy the. Uh, so it's quite interesting. So it's quite interesting. So you you uh, you know you 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 buy Apple and you sell McDonald's because you think okay that might be a good trade for the future, and and you lose half your money. Um, so so yeah, being being short Apple Mac uh, would have been the the right trade here, obviously. And then uh, maybe some of the other ones, Goldman Sachs, American Express. We talked about financials a second ago, and you know they they've been totally destroyed. Look at Caterpillar. I think you're talking about it a little bit later as well. Yes. You know these guys, uh, industrial um, down twenty percent. And then if you look at something like uh, Home Depot, interesting. You know up 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 seventeen percent. I've been keeping on this since January, February time. It's it's really uh, <laughs> it's one that it's just. On such an unbelievable rise, still, yeah, pre-crisis. I know it's the housing thing, it's the consumer, but as we'll see later when we look at the consumer, it's all just predicated on housing, which is predicated on rates. So let's just see what happens. Yeah, um, yeah. It's, yeah. And he, and here you see JP Morgan is down five percent. So Goldman's down twenty five percent. JP Morgan is down five percent. So there is there is still a lot to uh, to say for 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 pair traders within the sector. Always interesting. Um, dangerous as well because often they, they diverge for, for for the right reasons. But um, you know there might be some uh, some interesting opportunities there. Okay, and and there we go. Caterpillar, forty one monthly consecutive sales decline. And so this month, uh, obviously, we talked about what we're doing, uh, what happened in May, and now let's have a look at the case studies that we've looked at. So here's the different ones. 